In this video clip, we're going to look at Activity 8, and this is the Interface Evaluation. So the activity, let's have a look at what we've got to do. Evaluate your interface. You should consider the quality, performance and usability of the interface you have created in terms of how well it ensures. And then we split into two. We've got the machine form. The machine form is ready for data entry when the form opens. The purchase date must be present. The purchase date must not be in the future. The machine must be assigned a valid brand. A record will save in the machine table if all the required data is present and valid. And then the second part of the evaluation is about the meter reading analysis form. So for this one, these details appear on the meter reading analysis form after the machine ID has been selected and the week beginning date, meter reading and money collected has been input. We need the highest meter reading stored in the table for that machine, which is the most recent meter reading, the number of drinks sold, the amount of money expected, and the words call engineer if appropriate. And then of course, a reminder again about saving the file as a PDF. There's no template for this activity. So what you need to do is open a Word document, key in your evaluation, and then save it as a PDF using the file name as given in the activity. The important thing to understand about activity eight is that it's quite different from the evaluation in Part A. Part A was designed for learners to showcase the knowledge and understanding about normalisation, minimising data duplication, and how this can help ensure the requirements are met. Now, Part B is all about the interface and the usability of it from the user's point of view. It's important that you understand the difference between the evaluation in Part A and Part B. What you don't want to be doing is describing what you've done without any thought or mention to the user at all. What the examiner is looking for is to know or to see that what you've done and how this makes the solution easier for the user to use. So, for example, the provision of a combo box makes it easier for the user to select. It cuts down on errors and it makes it quicker to fill in. You will need to provide examples that match what's required in the task that you have used in the creation of your forms. As with Part A, I suggest you break Part B evaluation down into two main parts. Evaluate the machine form first and make sure you address all the points listed in the task. And then evaluate the machine reading analysis form, the second form, and make sure you cover all the points in the activity. Let's have a look at the evaluation of the interface. And I'll deal with this in two separate uh, sections. The first one, I'll look at the machine form evaluation. So this can be split into four subparts. We need to make sure we cover ready for data entry, that the brand is valid, that the date is present and not in the future, and the record saves all the data present and valid. Let's take this ready for data entry first. Here is a sample paragraph covering that first part. For form A, the machine input form, the scenario required that it should be open and blank ready for input. I've set the data entry property for the form to yes to meet this requirement. Once a record is saved, then I added the command go to record and next. So the next form was blank and ready for input again. I've used red asterisk to indicate to a user where data input is required. The next part of this evaluation of the machine form is to make sure that the brand is valid. 
So let's have a look at a sample paragraph. Another requirement in this scenario was that the branch uh, should be valid. I created a combo box and set limit to list equals yes and allow edits equals no. I've set the combo box to be two columns to display the brand ID and the brand name to make it easier for the user to select the correct brand. If the user enters an invalid brand ID, then an error message is displayed. The next paragraph of the evaluation covers the date being present and not in the future. Let's have a look at the paragraph. The scenario required that the purchase date is present and that it is not in the future. I've included two commands in the macro that checks the record before saving. The first is the is null function. If the control is empty, then the error message is displayed and the record will not save. The second uses the if and date functions to compare the purchase date with the current date from the system. If the purchase date is after the current date, an error message is displayed and the record is not saved. Providing the brand is valid and the purchase date is present and not in the future, the record will save. A message is displayed informing the user that the record is saved and a new blank form is displayed ready for input for a new machine. We've just seen a sample paragraph which covers this fourth point, record saves and all data, is all data present and valid. The second part of the evaluation covers the meter reading form evaluation and there's three subparts to this. Firstly, the machine details, the highest reading is correct for the machine ID selected. The number of drinks sold, amount expected and coal engineer, if appropriate, are correct. And that the date, reading and money collected is input. So let's take each one of these in turn and have a look at the paragraph that's been written. We'll cover this one first, the machine details, ice reading, correct for machine ID selected. And here's a sample paragraph. For the second form, I provided a combo box for the user to select the machine ID. A combo box means the user does not have to remember the machine IDs and can pick one from the list. Once the machine ID is selected, the form then finds the highest reading for that machine using the DMAX function. The next paragraph covers the date, reading and money collected being input. Let's have a look at the paragraph. The user enters the week beginning, current reading and money collected. I've provided a prompt for the user to enter data using the red asterisk. I formatted the date control to short date and the money collected control to currency to support the quality and usability of the form. And finally, the last paragraph covers this aspect, the number of drinks sold, amount expected and call engineer displayed if appropriate and if make sure that's correct. And here's a sample paragraph. Using the highest previous reading, and the current one, the form automatically calculates the number of drinks sold. It then automatically calculates the expected money by multiplying the number sold by £1.20. Finally, there is a comparison using the IF function to see if the difference between expected and collected is more than £10. If it is, then call engineer is displayed at the bottom of the form. I've got a final paragraph to this evaluation just to sort of summarise and finish things off. I've used the same house style for both my report and forms. One feature is the use of the blue line to divide portions of the forms. I've included appropriate titles for both forms. The labels for controls have been improved by adding spaces to the field names. Controls that do not require user input have been disabled, preventing the user from entering data. I've resized controls to be appropriate for the data in them. 
The controls on my forms have a logical sequence. My forms have a balanced look as I have centered titles, labels and controls. To enhance the appearance of the forms, I've taken off the record selector, navigation buttons and scroll bars. This is the final video in covering the June 2022 Unit 2 exam paper. Quick general advice, practice, practice, practice. The more practice you do for the preparation of this exam, the easier you will find it. And I wish you all good luck, best wishes with any future exams.